Aloha, namaskar, and hello. I'm Anu Hittel, host of Climate Change Beyond Outrage, where we discuss solutions to climate problems facing people, nations, and the world. Today, I want to talk about the Arctic, where a drama is unfolding. Climate change is causing the region's biggest ice sheets to melt. The Greenland ice sheet alone covers an area three times the size of Texas. If it melts, sea levels around the globe would rise by about six meters. That's 18 feet. Luckily, that hasn't happened yet. But Arctic ice melt is accelerating. This month, the extent of Arctic sea ice is the third lowest on record. And the record low was set just three years ago. This month, the extent of Arctic sea ice is the third lowest on record. And the record low was set just three years ago. That's according to experts at the National Snow and Ice Data Center, where they keep track of all things cold. It is worrying news for the Arctic's indigenous people who have lived in the region for millennia. Climate change means their homeland will be exposed to extensive alterations. And it means the Arctic will get much more attention from the rest of the world for its resources, for trade routes, and for tourism. But it's worrying news for all of us because what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. We have no idea what this huge amount of melted freshwater will do to ocean currents. Currents like the jet stream, which keep places like England warmer than other countries at those latitudes. Currents that determine which crops grow where. Eight nations that directly border this cold global commons make up the Arctic Council. Earlier this August, 35 experts from the Arctic Council and several other nations, including China and Japan, came together at the East-West Center to thaw out. They represented countries, indigenous governments, and research institutions. They focused on two main questions. First, how does the Paris Climate Agreement affect the Arctic? And second, how does the Arctic affect global climate? Climate superstar Dan Refsnyder, a leader of the process that led to the Paris Agreement, was here as well. He told the audience to stay tuned because enough nations may ratify the Paris Agreement for it to enter into force this year. The Arctic, however, is not directly mentioned in the Paris Agreement, which is surprising considering the huge role those ice sheets play in regulating climate. According to senior Arctic official Julia Gorley, the effects of black carbon are not directly addressed in the Paris Agreement. But for the Arctic Council's working groups, this is a big area of research. Black carbon particles are the dark specks of soot and dust produced by burning fossil fuels. Black soot can absorb heat and help speed the melting of ice. So what are the takeaways from this conference? The Arctic is melting, and it's melting fast. Faster than we can keep up with, and faster than indigenous knowledge or science can keep up with. We have very little information on these big changes. Some key information about the U.S. Arctic's continental shelf, for instance, is from old whaling records collected in the 1800s. These gaps in knowledge make it hard to understand the changes that have already happened and the changes to come. And these gaps make it difficult for us to become resilient and adapt. To help fill some of these gaps, this group of Arctic experts publishes an exhaustive report each year on this North Pacific Dialogue. It reflects nations' cooperation in Arctic science and monitoring and goes beyond politics. For more information, follow me on Twitter at Anu underscore Hittel or on Facebook, Climate Change Beyond Outrage. Aloha, namaskar, and goodbye.